Hey, what's up? It's Rashad, Tony, Ahsoka, episode number eight. The um, I'm guessing season finale. The name of the episode is the Jedi, the um, the, the witch, the, the the witch and the warlord. You know what I'm saying? Um, the chronicles of what of Narnia oh, yeah. vibes <laughs> in here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, All I spoilers. Witches, I am very intrigued with the conclusion of this of this 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 season. Okay, I want to talk about very i mean very briefly we're not gonna do like last week last week we lied we talked about the whole episode the whole time i yeah, want to briefly talk about <laughs> mm-hmm. i want to briefly talk about what happened because i can do that in two minutes all right mm-hmm. here we go there was a lightsaber made by ezra um we understand the backstory between ahsoka and sabine I'm- again let, let me just do this and we can talk about all this stuff all right um there are some zombies, you know what I'm saying? We got zombie stormtroopers. Um, what else? Um, Morgan Ellsworth um gets elevated to 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 night sisterhood, you know what I'm saying? Um Thrawn doesn't care about Morgan Ellsworth. <laughs> um <laughs> Lola the Empire. What else happens? Um Ezra. Okay, I'm sorry. Sabine figures out how to be a Jedi. Uh, Ezra needs a lightsaber. It looks kind of, yeah, I already said that. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. What else happens? Um, the, 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 Ahsoka and Sabine have an awesome little fight scene. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Morgan Ellsworth is dead. Mm-hmm. Um, Ezra gets on, 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 on the ship with the eye Scion. Mm-hmm. Ezra heads back home. And in the attempt to help Ahsoka, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, uh, Sabine jumps off and, and essentially he doesn't even get on the ship yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, goes back to help her, um, you know, her master. So we got mm-hmm. Padawan the master, and they try to get on. Oh, they oh they try to get on that ship, and and Grand Admiral Thawne said, "Hey, I knew who your master was, so I already knew you was about to be on some BS anyway. So I've won today." I won a little. I, I like like I, I won, and I'm going home. So he skedaddles on out of there, back to the um, you know, to the regular galaxy. <laughs> yeah, on on um, Peridia, we have Shinhati chilling out with the um, Tuscan Raider esque people. We have just a a, a, a snippet <laughs> of our boy Balin's skull. Who is yeah. hanging out on a monument that looks very reminiscent to the father and the son? Mm-hmm. And then we have um, Sabine and Ahsoka chilling with the Turtle Rock, chilling with the Fragger Rock people. And we get um, Morai's also there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Also known as the, um, the, the Convoroy, the, the Space Owl. Mm-hmm. And uh, we get uh, Space Anakin. So, so it's Anakin is there too. Oh yeah, Hera and 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 Ezra get their reunion. They didn't know who it was because, of course, he had the whole you know he had a stormtrooper get up just like old times. You know, it's like poetry rhymes. That's the episode, guys. All right, that's how it ends. Let's talk about the major thing in this episode, and that is that that place Peridia could potentially be the place where Anakin and them went in the Mortis um in, in the Mortis Arc and Clone Wars? Is 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 that what it's trying to tell me? Or is they just the people on that planet knew about all types of like space gods and they were just worshiping everybody? Like 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 because look we got we got the mortis, we got the mortis god monument there. We also had like the little scary looking um <laughs> monuments for like the nicest a couple of episodes ago when they first got there. The Zephos from the um the, 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 the Zeph- from the game. The, the Zepho was there, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So it's it's a lot of stuff happening at this one random planet in the next in the next galaxy over. Mm-hmm. Cause like I went back and looked at the Morse Arc this morning. And just because just for clips, and when they go there, they don't really know where they are. 
Because remember, mm-hmm. like they like 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 Anakin wakes up and it's yeah, like, how did they get there? I don't even remember. Like it, it like the Mortis planet they was on, it was like in his own reality. Because even mm-hmm. when because because even when um um the father was talking to, to Anakin it, before they literally backstabbed the son. <laughs> He was like, oh, man, I love you. I love you, son. And it was like, ah, gotcha. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> so, you know, um, the 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 uh, the um, so on this. So like the Mortis guys like that, like I don't it's I totally forgot my chair, but I was make, trying to make a joke. So, oh, yeah, I went back and 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 he says you have brought balance basically to where we are. And mm-hmm. when you go back to your God, so you're going to bring balance there, too. So is where they are, is that where they were? I don't know. I I don't know either, but I will say this. Remember what Balin Skull said. This place is the beginning. And this place is where it all starts. And this is where he says he's trying to, you know, I guess, cut all the BS and get rid of all the nonsense or whatever. And if you think about it, it's a good possibility that Balin Skull may be the most balanced person. He is. Yeah, he so, is. I mean, I mean, oh, like, like, okay, so looking at it like this, and even as, as I was watching the episode, we had everybody there. We had <laughs> the daughter with Mora. Mm-hmm. We had... The statue the, of the father. The statue of the father. He mm-hmm. had the son. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And 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 didn't um isn't Anakin, isn't he like the like 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 the basic like the um the, the incarnation of like one of them anyway? Yeah. Um also to what what could what I what I thought and what I've also seen since this morning online that that may not be you know i'm saying the planet of the mortis but it just might be a planet where the people there knew who the mortis gods were and it may be the holding cell for abolith that is could because abolith isn't dead they just basically kind of contained that that I mean, beast. but but like even with that, right? Like, right. Yeah. Is is, is that canon? <sighs> the the Abloff isn't canon yet, right? I don't know if it's canon yet, but I'll if, check. If it if this is where they're going, this is this is crazy. So so this is my this is my my thing with 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 how it ended. I I liked how it ended, but. I feel like it can go two ways. Number one, it has to be a second season. There's no way it can't, it's not a second season of Ahsoka. Unless, unless, and this is the unless I have, they are going to, everything that happens in the prime galaxy that we know of. Yeah, yeah. It's just going to be taken through the Mandalorian and what other show that may be there. And what's going to happen on the Galaxy Peridia Zone with all of them, that's completely separate from now. Because remember what Ahsoka said at the end, because she seemed very content in how she was. She said, you know, Ezra is where he belongs. Yeah, He's doing what he's supposed to do we're here and we're here where we belong so this could lead be a way for Filoni and if he does this guy he's genius type stuff where we're going to get a whole new set of Star Wars movie based on Ahsoka and what's going on in this galaxy itself because you got to remember we still have on this planet Ahsoka Sabine Shinhati and Balin Skull uh, rest in peace to Ray Stevens. He's no longer with us. Yeah, God, he's nobody that no longer hurt with so us. Bad. It hurt. However, 
I came up with a person that I wouldn't mind, I guess, filling that spot. Fan cast, Tony. Huh? I said, go ahead and fan cast. Liv Shiver. Yo, that could, yo, Saber to himself. That would work. <laughs> that would really work. Yo, hey, hey, man. Casting directors, man. Yeah. Get on it. Looks yeah, very, yeah, that would uh, work. A great actor. He definitely and is. Definitely great actor and resembles Ray Stevens in the. In the um, Balin Skull character, yeah, yeah, how he yeah, looks yeah, or whatever, yeah. he I think pull it that off. He I think he off. could pull pull it off. But it's like, like you, it's like, I think this, this is the first like Star Wars show, Disney Plus Star Wars show that really has me going. Yo, where the hell are we going from here? Yeah, like, like, and- like, where are we go? Because I, I don't think they ever mentioned that there was going to be a second season of Ahsoka. Nah, one bit, man. So, didn't. oh yeah, Abel, by the way, is is a Legends character oh. only. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, so we'll see. So, you so I saw, like, and that's what I was like when I was watching it. I'm looking. I'm like, because, or here's my hot take. <laughs> hot take Rashad in the house. Let's go. My hot take is um the the. Uh, so, and, and, and when I make this reference, I want you to understand and know that with the movie that I'm going to refer to this sh- series as, I love this movie. People hate this movie. I am a staunch defender of this movie. And it has such a, a special place in my heart. However, okay. I understand its faults. Okay. Ahsoka is the Iron Man 2 of the Disney Plus, uh, of the Disney Plus Star Wars series. Iron Man 2. Ah- Ahsoka is the Iron Man 2 of the Disney okay. plus Star Wars series. Let me tell you why. It's okay. so many things that they try to do in this one series. Just like everything that they tried to set up in Iron Man 2. They set up a lot of stuff in Iron Man 2. Mm-hmm. And to the chagrin of a lot of people, it was at the detriment of this the movie itself. Coming okay. off the heels of Iron Man 1. Iron Man 1 is probably top three origin movie mm-hmm. of anything, not just superhero, just anything that has an origin. Mm-hmm. That's top three to me. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. right, right up with Star Wars and maybe even Lord of the Rings. So you have to really understand that the bar was so high. So we have Mando first season, Mando. Ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> That's kind of the bar we set. And then we give the character of Ahsoka, you know what I'm saying? Like one of the the characters that had probably the best arc as the past like 10, 15 years, because where Mm -hmm. she started to where the character is now, Mm -hmm. it was the most hated. Now is now she's one of the most revered characters. Mm -hmm. I posted some stuff back when they had the Tales of the Jedi and people was coming out the woodworks talking about talking about Ahsoka. I was like, I didn't even know where y'all been. I didn't know y'all was even here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for that, for them to actually try to, and, and again, this is where the show was weakest to me. The show was weakest to me when it wasn't focusing on Ahsoka. Okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When we got, when we, when we were trying to do Rebels season five, that's mm-hmm. when the show was at its weakest. But when they focused on Ahsoka, mm-hmm. Ahsoka's villains, Mm-hmm. And what's actually driving the plots? Mm-hmm. That's when the show's at the strongest. But they had added so much other stuff into that. Then on top of it, to basically have that epilogue, to have that epilogue that we just we've been talking about for the past ten minutes, to have that epilogue at the end of that is like, like, like yo, that's we could have really tell me. We could have really set that up. Let's let's just get some, let's go ahead and get this out the way because I was about to mention it earlier and you said you want to get through to it. Finally, after eight episodes, this could have been done. This could have been done. Wait, what? Second, third, ep- second, third episode. This could have been done. We figured out what was the beef or what happened between Sabine and Ahsoka. Hey, guess what? 
We didn't even really need to have a flashback for it or nothing. It would have been nice, but it really wasn't needed because Uyang explained it perfectly. Ezra, he's like, he noticed that there's something going on between them. And he's like, hey, man, what's up? What happened to them when I was gone? What happened? And he was just like, hey, man, the, hey, at the end of the war, the Empire, hey, it was the purge of Mandalore. And he was like, huh? He's like, yeah, they bombed the, they bombed the surface of the entire planet. And, you know, no survivors. And he was like, yo, her family? He was like, no. Nah. And he was like, the whole point was, he was like, you know, that's when Sabine was like, really started focusing gun ho on being a Jedi. And Ahsoka was like, no, nah, you're doing this for the wrong reason. And I can't train you. I can't train you for this or whatever. And I won't train you for this because you're doing this for the wrong reason. This is also what it also explains too why you know, in Mandalorian season two, when uh, when Din Djarin brings Grogu to her and they find her, and he was like, "All right, here, can you train him? Do this?" And she was like, "Nope, can't. I'm not doing it." Because she says, "I see." Remember, she said, "She says I see the attachments to him, and he's too attached to you." And you know, with the Jedi's, they they're like, you know, they try their best not to have attachments because attachments lead to the dark side. And she, of all people, knows. With her master, what happens with attachments? Because her master was attached to Dagon Padme, and we saw what happened to him. And man, it's it's so Tony. so we figured out exactly what happened. Tony. Yeah. And in the next scene, Ahsoka and Sabine have a conversation, and they still don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. Why? Why did the dialogue have to come from a robot explaining it to the person that's been gone for nine, ten years? Mm -hmm. That was the easy set of saying, hey, yo, like she could have that, yo, that part of this show drives me crazy. Yep. The, 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 it, yo, just think, Tony, think how impactful that could have been just for them as characters. Because mm -hmm. then, then to see, okay, then to and see then, them at the end of the episode having to be together on said place, mm -hmm. like like that, that that little stupid dialogue they had between, like, oh yeah, like you hurt, yeah I hurt, blah blah blah, blah. No, it's all good. My my master supported me, so I'm gonna support you. Okay, huh? easily could have been you? like fam, like yo, I like even in that whole thing, you know what mm -hmm. never happened. Was that there was no real apology? No, no, there was so, never no. So, 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 <laughs> as a character, Tony, what did they really learn? You know what they did not learn? Forgiveness, <laughs> which is oh. a character trait, especially like especially if you're telling a story. Mm -hmm. Like if, if there's aught with somebody in this, in like 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 the, you should be showing the audience, like yo. This is how you have forgiveness and 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 be an and unconditional love for somebody else because that's what this really that's what it really is the whole master mm -hmm. Padawan, master and Padawan relationship it's mm -hmm. about loving them unconditionally even though you know their faults even though you know they can be a jerk and they can go rogue you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. all the stuff that Sabine is doing and that Ahsoka did you know what I'm saying they don't express that aspect of it and and to me they don't acknowledge it at all. Like, like that would have been so much more like that whole conversation would have been so much more impactful. And I know a lot of people say, yo, yo, like, why are you watching the show if y'all don't like it? I said, I like this show, but yeah. some of these things that they just did not put in there for the show mm -hmm. to be like I, 42 minutes long, basically, mm -hmm. they could have easily added that dialogue. But you know what they did? We saw the whole freaking night sister ceremony from back from the Clone Wars in live action. Mm -hmm. Why am I wasting my time watching Morgan Elsbeth become a night sister just for her to die at the end of the episode? Why are we here? Yo. She got murked, Murder. Tony. <laughs> Double a blades. So, a so, yo, you know what's crazy about that scene, too? And this is what pissing me off about shows. This ain't a Star Wars thing. Why is all the daggone, um, the, 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 the night troopers is there attacking uh -huh. everybody, but when they there, all of a sudden, she gets to shoot a fair one. 
Like, no, like kill yeah. Ahsoka. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like, what are we doing? Mm-hmm. Y'all been on attack mode the whole time. Now all of a sudden, like, oh yeah, we're uh-huh. gonna get that one, <laughs> that one v one on right now. Right, exactly. Also, can we talk about this? Is it safe to say that Thrawn is shook of Ahsoka? Like, he don't want no. He knows. He knows. He, he knows. Because let me tell you something. Ah- Ahsoka is Anakin. Because, like, listen, when they went to go storm the little base, what did they do? Hey, well, there's always the front door. That is some Anakin Skywalker type stuff yes. right there. If it ain't that. And did you see the look in Thrawn? When they kept oh, Lars, <laughs> Lars' face acting as Thrawn when he was like, rain hail fire on them and he's just like and he's just like getting more pissed and pissed and he's like go and then he's like like he's like this bitch just got dang she, she like she is just like her bastard coming uh-huh. up in there he do he he's like hey night hey he says hey great mothers hey we need to put this plan into action right there for this thing uh-huh. and then when he thought it talking greasy to her and, and once again when will these people learn? Stop mentioning Anakin Skywalker and talking about him in a derogatory way to Ahsoka Tano. She does not play those games, and she is not here for it. Not Thrawn all, said, yeah. "Like, hey, yep." He says, "Finally, nice to meet you." So I couldn't do it in person. He was like, "You did everything I thought you was gonna do because you are just like your master." And he, and then when he was just like. Just how much like your master are you? That was saying, like, you going to turn the dark side like Yo, him? And, <laughs> yeah. and he said, maybe it's good for a Ronin, Ronin. like you to be left here. <laughs> uh, yo, he called this girl a Ronin. <laughs> you, what, man? I was like, he called her a wandering samurai. That's what a Ronin is, a, ro- a wandering samurai. Like, Tony, that describes her so well right. since, since since the Clone Wars. She, right. That's what she's been doing. Yeah, ever since she left the Order, she's just been yeah. a wandering man. He is like, you know. Especially even in her Tales of the Jedi episode. She was literally. Oh, yeah. When oh, she yeah. killed the um the, the inquisitor, yeah, uh huh, yes, yeah, and, and he burnt all the hay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like she was literally a wandering samurai. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's. It, but it's just so stuff. funny because you know Thrawn is always so calm, collected. My man was like, "Kill, get, help me, kill, get rid of, get rid of this daggone problem right here. Get rid <laughs> yeah. of her." Yo, Thrawn was like the dude on the train. <laughs> help. Me, <laughs> me, help, help, help police, me. <laughs> police, help me. He was yo, he won't. He hey, get rid of her. Hey, he said, prepare, he knew to prepare for a ground assault. Yo, and he, he, was, said, he said, right rain now, hellfire. <laughs> <laughs> yo, do you know how rain hellfire? But oh my god. <laughs> That's that worse. so weak, yo. That is a worse. Li- that is a wor- that line is so awesome. That's more awesome. The dago with Thanos was like rain down fire. No, he said rain hell fire. He said get rid, <laughs> get rid of her. Get she is a problem. And I mean, good God, oh, good God Almighty. And I mean, I guess we can figure out to what was in those boxes or whatever oh in the I, coffins those are definitely coffin. this is gonna be like okay they about what? to replenish replenish um dathomir with the uh with the night sisters and yeah night, and possibly night brothers i mean yeah i I'm mean like, the, the 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 fact that they went through all that trouble to do that it like mm-hmm. their plan was okay it's, it's like we got a two for one so we're gonna get Thrawn back. Thrawn can do whatever he wants. And also, I love how Thrawn finally got smart. We talked about this last episode, mm-hmm. and it actually starting to embrace the things that he can't control. Mm-hmm. So instead of um not accounting for it, now he is leaning into it and asking it for help. And that's like anything mm-hmm. supernatural, basically the force for them. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to use the force against the force users because he can't mm-hmm. wield the force himself. So that was just a, 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 a tactician adding something else to his quote unquote, you know, chessboard or, or, or his repertoire. Yeah, man. Cause like, yeah, because 
like, is, could you just imagine Thrawn if he was a Force user? Good God, this like you know he'd be it, OP it, for it real. Be, yeah, it would be so unfair, like how crazy he would be, especially with, and I mean crazy in a good way because especially with like you know his his um tactic his um tactical plan and he'd be an ultimate strategist. He would be ridiculously crazy with that. But um, also another thing too, I wish we would have saw it when. When they got to the, you know, saying to the base on Peridia, and Ahsoka was like, So, Ezra, what is this right here? He was like, Look, man, I don't know. Thrawn got here. He went to that and he woke up the Night Sisters. Hmm. What do you mean? Did you wake them up? Were they like, Yeah. Were they like in in stasis? Were they in hibernation? Like, those are the things that I wish we would have gotten uh, to you know gotten is this to a know metaphorical whatever. waking up like i don't like it maybe they needed some motivation right. i don't like again there's a lot and, that and a, that we just don't know and apparently he tried to raid the fortress before and he was like hey i couldn't do it by myself you know so yeah, he, he, said, Look, he was like well you got yeah he's like no i need more to i need more than one person for this or whatever and it was like oh well you got more than one person there and you know charge you know so that's that's that man. Speaking of more than one person, um, the fact that Sabine is like a like legit Padawan, that like that really surprised me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And 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 I didn't like. I don't know. I, it just feels very unearned. Yeah, there's to, a to lot me, of people that are like, extremely butt hurt about. I'm like I'm not mad, but like it, uh-huh. it just was like yo, like y'all didn't put in, like, like to me. I just wish you just like remain a Mandalorian, but I but I know, but I understand like now, like seeing the whole thing, I understand what they were trying to do. I don't feel like I, I the the fact that she was able to like you know really legitimately force push. Um, like um, that was a little far fetched. You know, your 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 boy. I mean, like my, when I was watching it, I was like, "How was she able to do this? What is this like? The power of love? You know what I'm saying? Like, is the power, the power of, love, of love? Is yeah? Is is the power of love helping her? Because that goes against the whole Jedi way. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, because like now that she has the only attachment that she really wanted, that she's able to to unlock her ability. And, and and if that's the 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 reasoning or the logic they want to use, then I'm good with it. But however, it's never really said, and it's just like you know, just the the trope of the uh, of the person who's been struggling all of a sudden, all of a sudden can can do the thing now. And right. like to me, just as a storytelling um trope, like that's one of the tropes that I just don't, I can't really get down with. Yeah, okay. I mean it. There's a lot of people that are like super, super pissed off. Like, yeah, I can't believe she's, a, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more like, huh, like I guess type thing, you know, what I'm saying compared to other people that are upset. I'm not super, super upset about it, but it is kind of like, all right, you're going to make Sabine be the magical Mandalorian. <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in a sense, since Vizsla, you know, what I'm saying since what Tar Vizsla, whatever, got, uh-huh. you're gonna make her the new the magical Mandalorian. Since then, and she's able, you know, it's like soon as she was able to, you know, what I'm saying it's one thing to be able to do a few things. She was able to, you know, summon her lightsaber. Now she can straight up like super duper force push Ezra. You know, what I'm saying to you know, what I'm saying onto the ship and stuff like that. When and, and and I know what you mean. It felt like it wasn't earned. It felt like it wasn't earned, but I guess it's part of the story or whatever. If if there's a season two, you know, my thing is, you know, what is she going to be? Do- you know, say what is she going to go from this point forward? And and then too, they tried to make it seem like at the end that her force powers are even manifested even more because. I believe before she walked over to to Ahsoka when Ahsoka was on that hill, I believe Ahsoka was communing with Anakin, and then Sabine came over and she they they had a little conversation, and when Ahsoka walked away, Sabine was looking 
And she said, I, hey. And Ahsoka looked at her and said, hey, what, what's, what you see something? What's up? She was like, uh, no, nah, you know, it's just the lights and shadows. They made it, they made it seem like Sabine saw, saw, you know, saying the force ghost of Anakin. Yeah. And to me, it's like, I don't really think she did. Like, it's just okay. like, for some, like, I guess some stuff, if, if she, okay, if she goes from not embracing the force to all of a sudden being able to have all these force abilities and be able to see force ghosts, like, come on, y'all. Like, we doing the most, y'all. Like, you that sensitive yeah. now? Yeah. No. All right. I, I think we pretty much done talking with the show. I guess the thing we have now is what's going to happen from here. Um. So what? The next... So there are other Star Wars shows coming up. But what I guess I can say is what is... What's the next show that's going to be part of the Filoni verse? Because I like to call that for this movie. Skeleton Crew. Is that going to be a part? That's a part of this Filoni verse. That's going to definitely. Okay. Okay. So you got that. And then that. And then in the process, they're going to have to, you know, do what they're going to do that final season of Mandalorian, right? Season four before they go do the movie, right? Yeah. Okay. We okay. Might, at this rate, we might not get the movie to like, 2027? Seven, eight. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a minute. Yeah, because I mean, the writers and whatever just finished getting off the strike. Actors and stuff. Still on the strike. strike. Yeah, you know, they're still on the strike and stuff. And, you know, I, sheesh, man, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just really interested to see where are we going to go from here? So, is Ahsoka going to just, like I said, focus and be in this galaxy? Or is she gonna? They're gonna find a way to get back to, you know, the galaxy, the known galaxy that they that they are part of. And now, you know, you know, Ezra being back, he can go before the New Republic and be like, "Hey, idiots, <laughs> yeah, y'all ain't want to listen to my people, but look, look what we got now." <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna listen. Of it's course. it's 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 like for me that part is. Hmm, I don't even know. Like it's that can be interesting. I really wonder if um I wonder how they're going to construct Thrawn as a threat in between like Turn of the Jedi and Force Awakens. Like how like how are they gonna enter that into the mix? You feel what I'm saying? Because right. so right. far in like in like the in the sequel trilogy, ain't no mention of Thrawn. So how are they gonna Make Thrawn a threat yeah. by also either shipping him, I don't know, maybe back <laughs> to the galaxy or killing him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, how, how like, yeah. how are we going to do that? It's, he's going to have to die. He's going to have to die. And somehow, I think a, a remnant of his force is going to be a part of, you know, saying, finding out about Exegol and, you know, what I'm saying the, you know, what I'm saying the Sith Eternal. And that's what's going to happen with. <laughs> with that or whatever but yeah i mean whew. so let me ask you rashad okay on a scale of one to ten what grade do you give this show a strong six okay i say i i'm 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 I, i'm giving it a seven just it and and the only reason it's really getting a seven for me is because of that arc where Anakin and Ahsoka, that the, what that little two episode arc, what was that episode five and six? I believe so. Five four and six, four, four, four and five, four and five, five and six, whatever. That yeah. right there is is because that was very strong. There was some really strong stuff right there. I just think that this show leaves us asking more questions, asking more questions, and oh. wanting to know what's going to happen next yeah in any of the shows in this little felony verse of star wars you know that that's going on right now i will give that i will um i'll concede to that there's definitely this the show has way more um way more intrigue to it you know what i'm saying like i'll concede to to that I, however the reason why i 
I give it a six is because to me, for some of it, they're not really being honest to the characters as they were. Okay. And I'll give you an example. An example is, is Sabine. They try to, it's almost like a video game. So there's a video game and, you know, you get to the end. Of course, as you go along, you power up. And then there's a sequel to the game. Are you going to strip the character of all the things that they went through to make you, the player, build back up to a point? Or are you going to have them leave them where they left off and then have them build towards the, the rigor of the, of, of the new task at hand? And what they did was they basically reset her to zero in this series. Mm -hmm. Remember, she could not shoot in the ship because her presets were gone. Mm -hmm. That's how that that's what it has to be in it. Like like she wasn't a weapons expert. <laughs> Even if she hadn't shot anything in years, it should be second nature. So yeah. for me, like that part of it was nah, like yeah, I, I gotta respect the character. So when yeah. so when I was going so hard on like why are you doing this to Sabine, it's not because I didn't like the character, it's because I really like the character a lot. Right. Secondly, it gets a six because they did not talk about anything. It was so much non-dialogue mm -hmm. that it was like can y'all just let the audience, the greater audience know what's going on? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's all that's all I'm asking. And, and like I said, at one point, y'all need to let us know what's going on. We watch, we watch the stuff. Mm -hmm. And we not not even privy to to anything. So that's where it was lacking for me. I'm I'm hoping that when this other stuff comes out, especially in the movie, that they uh, that that Star Wars understands that if Filoni writes this. We need to make sure that there's some checks and balances to this. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I love Filoni. I love what he's doing. I love how he gets to play in his playground, so to speak. But we see that Filoni is strongest when he has strong directors. Who directed the episode? Rick Famuyiwa, strong director. Who directed all the Mandalorian, basically? Or was like the showrunner for the Mandalorian? <laughs> John Favreau. So... He has he has to make sure even when like Dave was directing his own stuff, like it's progressively gotten better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even his his episode is the Ahsoka flashback episode. Mm -hmm. Probably the best episode of the season. Yeah. But the other stuff, when it was like, ah, I'm gonna write this against Punch directed, like it wasn't his strongest stuff. So yeah, <sighs> that's really it for me, man. That's all we got for this one. Um, we man, Tony, we're gonna be back. We're going to be back Friday with Loki season two. Can't wait for that. Um, And we, I don't know, we might, we might hop back up here just, you know, as a couple of days go by, just to talk about, you know, just the, this, this season as a whole, or we got some burning questions, or if y'all got questions, leave them in the comments and we can talk about it. Yes, sir. All right. So we got until right. so next time.